So we have manually lowered the taps and we're now getting a reading of 121.4 volts, which is just outside of that bandwidth setting. We can confirm that by this simple indicator right here, outside of band, that light is lit up outside of band low. Hey, what's up guys? You're watching Bob's Decline, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at a voltage regulator. We're actually out in the field doing an inspection on the regulator right now. We've covered these in the past. We had a fairly in-depth video probably a couple of years ago. So this voltage regulator is now actually energized. We just closed in the load side switch, which now is it not only energized, but half the load is actually traveling through the regulator, feeding the customers, as well as the other half in that bypass switch. Years ago, so I will link to that. But what we're gonna be doing differently today is we're gonna go in the control panel at the bottom of the pole and actually manually change the settings. We're gonna change the output voltage that's fed downstream in order to test its automatic function. So just a really quick rundown for those of you that didn't see any previous videos on voltage regulators. This guy in front of us, way down here, that's a transformer. Those are transformers on the poles. And this guy behind me is a voltage regulator. There, there's kind of a transformer built into it so we can get readable voltages down at the control panel. However, its main function is completely different from a transformer. While transformers bring the voltage down from 7200 volts to our 120, 240, so it can feed the houses, our voltage regulators boost the voltage usually boost, sometimes lower the voltage on lines that are feeding a really long distance. So if we get our substation, which in this case, it's like 250 poles away, there's, there's a line loss as that voltage travels through the lines. In fact, that's why we feed our lines with 7,200 volts and not 120. If there was 120 volts traveling through 250 span, it would virtually be not usable. The voltage drop throughout those lines, you might read, you might not even read voltage through that part. So the higher voltage has an easier time, for lack of better words, traveling at long distances. However, there is still a voltage drop. If we've got 7,400 volts on the single phase of the sub, by the time we get out here, there might only be 7,100 volts. So it passes through this voltage regulator, boosts that back up. There could be another set, another 200 span away, maybe 50 span. It also depends on the load. Let's say at dinner time everyone's got their ovens on everyone's cooking there's a high demand for power usage on the lines that also creates a voltage drop that's why these voltage regulators don't simply boost the voltage back up they actually monitor the voltage and constantly adjust that voltage up or down according to the demand and the voltage drop that's on the line so our purpose of the inspection is to test that function part of the inspection obviously is to check the condition of the unit as a whole it is oil filled so you want to make sure there's no oil leaks you want to check the condition of the insulators on the unit the overall condition of pretty much the entire pole and the control panel i'm still in the truck right now because it's freezing and it's really windy but let's jump out and have a closer look here i'll try and talk loud as it's going to be pretty noisy with that window there so as usual there is some security issues i can't show you guys exactly how to operate all this stuff but we'll do our best at least to show um, a good understanding of how the unit operates. So this is our control panel right here at the butt of the pole. We've got that opened up. Using this control panel, we there's a variety of settings, tests and functions we can do. Pretty much the voltage that's in this regulator, there's 7,200 volts passing through that and it's transformed by the time it gets down through this cable into this unit at approximately 120 volts. So if we want to know the actual voltage in the lines, whatever we get in this unit with our voltmeter, our multimeter, you multiply that by the ratio of 60 to 1. Now that 60 to 1 ratio is only, only going to apply if it's on the tap zero. So when I say tap zero, we can see on this analog dial, you can see the zero, and then it can go up or down 16 taps. So it's currently on tap so the voltage coming out of the load side of this unit is slightly higher than, than the input side. We're going to check the current voltage with our multimeter. There's 
couple access ports here for the voltage and we've got 123.6 volts currently. So there's a setting on this device that it works around our 124 volts. That's our voltage setting, 124 volts. And then we have a bandwidth setting of 2.5 volts. So if this voltage goes outside of that, that range, 124 plus or minus 2.5 volts, that's when this unit will auto tap. So what we're gonna do is, let's lower that voltage. So if we're 124, if we can manually lower that voltage down to 121.5 volts, which is, is still an acceptable voltage to the customer's homes. It's not gonna damage anything. It'll be outside of that setting and this unit will then operate. So what we're gonna do, I can't show you guys this part, but we're gonna switch off the unit and I'm going to begin manually lowering the taps. So we have manually lowered the taps and we're now getting a reading of 121.4 volts, which is just outside of that bandwidth setting. We can confirm that by this simple indicator right here, outside of band, that light is lit up outside of band low. I still have the unit shut off, so it will sit outside of its band unit and outside of its bandwidth until I turn the unit back on. Let's also take a look up top. We were on cap four. We're now on tap one. So basically what we're simulating here is, let's say it's lunchtime as I mentioned earlier, ton of, ton of load is, is being used, ton of power is being used. So the voltage starts decreasing and that unit senses that. So we're gonna turn the unit back on and there's a time delay setting as well. I should have mentioned that so that when it goes outside of its bandwidth, it's not gonna start tapping like crazy if it's sitting right on the edge of the bandwidth. But our time delay is set at 45 seconds. So I'm just gonna pause the video until this 45 seconds goes by. All right, it's been 45 seconds. So this unit should start tap, there it goes. You can see it went up to 122.2. It should tap at least one more time here. So it automatically tapped up. Now the voltage is within that bandwidth setting just below 123 volts and we can see that our out of bandwidth light has gone out. So basically what we were testing here is that the unit was functioning if the voltage went below the low bandwidth setting and it automatically did tap up. You have to repeat the same process to make sure that the, the automatic tap functions on the high side as well. So we're gonna have to bring this voltage above the bandwidth setting on the high side, let's say to 126.5 volts and it should automatically tap back down on its own. I have come across units in the past where one or the other was not functioning. If that's the case, it must be reported to our engineering and our dispatcher right away, and the unit will be shut off and taken out of service. Before being shut off, we'll place it at a tap that's pretty much its average use. Right, right around, if it's uh, this time of day, middle of the morning, we'll set it right around 124 volts. If it's during, let's say, supper time, you might want to, uh, lowered a little bit. So now that we've confirmed the condition of the unit, the structure, the control panel as a whole, another very important thing that you want to check when doing an inspection is, is the neutral light. If ever we have to take this unit out of service, we're going to have to bypass the unit. So we can see here there's the source side cutout which is on our left and then our load side cutout on the right. In order to take this device out of service, you will have to bypass it. Most of our installations do have a bypass switch, which is right above us here. You can see if that switch is closed in, it'll actually parallel the lines above with what's going through that tank. And then we can then open the devices on either side of the tank and remove it from service. So the important thing here, and I've mentioned this in the last regulator video, but I'll mention it again, because it is the most important thing to remember when working in the field with voltage regulators. If you close that bypass cutout, if you try to bypass this unit and the voltage isn't the exact same on both the source and load side, the unit will explode, for lack of better words. There will be a catastrophic failure. So in order to confirm that voltage, you must confirm it with at least two, two checks. The first check is there is a neutral light on this device. Uh, what setting are we on now? We're on 
hat three right now. So one way to check that, we're gonna switch it back to manual. You can see here, there's our neutral light and we are on tap setting three. So in order to trust that neutral light, we're going to manually lower that to tap zero. You can see that yellow hand is starting to move up there. You don't want to do this check if you're way up at tap 12 because you're going to bring the voltage down way too low. One more tap. Okay, so we're on zero now. Sorry, I'm drifting a little bit. So if that display shows zero and our neutral light here, which is lit up, they, they can coincide with each other. How come my neutral light went off? Oh, it didn't, there we go. Then that's our two indicators that this is in fact functioning. We can also see here that our output voltage is sitting at 120 volts. So where that's currently on tap zero, our output, which is the exact same as our input into that unit's 120, multiply that by a ratio of 60 to one, and we've got almost 7,200 volts on the nose in the primary line. Now, if for some reason, when you get that indicator on zero, that neutral light doesn't light up, it could just be burnt out, but you can't assume that. Also, if that neutral light, I gotta jump the truck, my hands are frozen. If that neutral light doesn't agree with the analog display, again, you cannot close that bypass switch. So there is one final way to confirm that it's zeroed in, that the voltage is equal on either side of the unit. And that's by measuring the voltage up on the primary side. So there, there's a few devices. We've got a device at the office. It can only measure up to 2000 volts. However, the voltage difference, if it's on extreme uh, boost or extreme buck, I mean the highest or lowest setting, the maximum voltage difference you're going to get is 14, a little over 1400 volts difference. Uh, another device you can use, and again we saw this in a video before, but I've actually got a brand new one. This uh, Troubleman's kit from Sensorlink. It's basically a high voltage voltmeter. So this guy here, you put it on a hot stick, of course. You have to put your attachments on this guy here. This is your other end, right here. Uh, I'll put a link to the video that has this product in way more detail. But this, this bolt stick from Sensorlink, you take your two prongs, this guy on one end, this guy on the other, and you literally clamp those right on to the high voltage leads on either side of the voltage regulator. And then with your wireless display, you will see the exact voltage right down to the volt. So there's no guessing at that point. some companies even that do require this test to remove these from service or to close in that bypass switch if the unit is failing. I definitely encourage you guys to check out and again I'll put a link in the description but I'd encourage you all to check out the video I released a few years ago of the Sensolink products. I met a bunch of guys from the crew at the Utility Expo in Kentucky and they were a really great bunch. It was it was really great to meet them after using their products in the past and they mentioned that they did make some improvements to the products. So they sent me off this brand new demo of the Troublements kit. It is made in USA, shipped worldwide. There's some real cool changes they did to the product. A great example is their radio amp stick, which can now actually read direction of flow. So you stick that on your extendo stick as we've seen in the past video can go up and you can read amperage on the primary voltage lines even up to 133 kV 
5,000 amp auto ranging and it'll tell you the direction of flow. So if you're downtown in a busy city, you've got a gang switch on either side of your work area, there's a vehicle accident, you've got to dump that line fast. You shove this guy up in the lines and it'll actually indicate whether the power is coming from this way or coming from this way. Really cool product. It also doesn't matter if it's lined up 100% with the wire as long as it's down below these two green lines. They even change the case that this guy comes in. Really cool, heavy duty, water tight case. Funny story, when I was going to a meeting with this in a hotel, there was three different people that stopped as I was walking into the elevator asking where my handcuff was to the case. But we're gonna be taking a closer look at that. We had to use the ant stick during storm when troubleshooting a line that kept blowing a fuse that ended up being cold load pickup. So can't wait to show you guys how that went. But we're gonna lock this unit up. I got a whole bunch of information input on the computer here. Stay safe guys and stay warm. It's freezing out there today. So we'll see you all soon.